God, y'all not in here. I'm not a psychologist or a sociologist, but I tell you, I know that's one of the problems. And the men who had fathers in their home, they didn't have a good relationship. They didn't have that tenderness. I can't stay there. But he says, that's the anointing of Elijah. See, the, the, I'm going to cut this short. The old prophet, Elijah, that was caught up in heaven, he did many miracles. But the coming Elijah wasn't going to do miracles. The anointing would be turning the hearts. God. Fixing families. Our families are dysfunction. Yours, your, your, your house messed up. I said, your house is messed up. You got some problems in your house. You got some issues in your house. Uh, me and my wife, we agree on everything. I said, yeah, because you, you, you make a lot of decisions. Okay. But the anointing will be turning the hearts of fathers to children and children's heart to the fathers. Now, Matthew 11, 13 and through 15 lets us know this. If you will receive it, that was the words of Jesus, John the Baptist is Elijah. That, so you can check that out. I'll right. just put it down for you some background. Um, Luke 1, 15 through 17, it reads, He shall go before him in the spirit. Talking about John the Baptist. He will have the same spirit or characteristic or anointing and power or authority of Elijah or Elias. And he would turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. We just read it in Malachi. Matthew 17, 9 through 13. This is the condensed version. It says that Elias, Elias which is Elijah, yeah. is come already. Then the disciples, Jesus was talking. And he said, Elijah has already come. And the Bible said, then the disciples realized that John the Baptist was Elijah to come. So you can read those scriptures in detail. So John the Baptist was going to have that anointing. And it was going to be through John that the hearts of the fathers would be turned to the children and the children to the fathers. There had to be a change. See, the only way that we can fix this thing, we can't fix this thing at the school room. It's got to be at the house. It can't be at the, the schoolhouse. It's got to be at our house. Teachers don't have time to be trying to raise your children. Maybe you need to raise You need to put some rod on that child at the house. Teachers don't even need to have to party and put it in. You don't have enough to do all that. Y'all stand here with my good praise. I, I'll take my medicine. I'm giving you information this morning. Watch this. Jesus himself. The Bible says, how did God anointed him with the Holy Ghost? With all the anointing that he had, they despised him. So don't think folks are going to like you just because you're nice. The Bible said Jesus did no wrong. And they still rejected him and despised him. In John 10 and 30, it reads, I and my Father are one. That one statement that Jesus made, Jesus said, my Father, talking about God, and I, we are the same. And when he said that, the Israelites began to pick up stones to kill him. Because he had the nerve to say he and God were. God, stay with me. And the Bible says in John 39, what? Therefore they sought again to take him, uh -huh. but he escaped yeah, out this, of their hands. This was a crowd of people going to take him and stone him to death. Because he said, the Father and I are one. But the Bible said he escaped. Jesus could have stood right there and stood his ground and called legions of angels or brought fire to heaven. But sometimes you have to know when to fold them. Amen. Even Jesus showed, you have to know when to walk away. Right. Stop fighting every time somebody pick a fight with you. Right. Somebody was trying to argue me one time, but I said, hold up. You have an argument that I'm not having. Yeah. <laughs> trying to argue with me, and I said, you try to have an argument, I'm not arguing. So Jesus escapes out of their hand. John 10 and 40 says what? And went away again beyond Jordan into the place where John had first baptized. He went back to 
where it began. But John was first baptized. Not only did John have an anointing, places, locations have anointings. Y'all not in here with me, are you? You can't get the same anointing. If God did it and moved in a place, why would you leave a place looking for another place? I'm not talking about church. I'm talking about location now. See, many of us are out of position and out of place. God is ready to bless us, but we're not in position. We at the house this morning, right now, watching a football team. Because we have $50 on the square. You won't put $5 in an offering that God will bless 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold. You'll spend $50 and lose that. And then call the pastor. Can you help me? Y'all in here with me? Some days of greater works. But to get different results, we're going to have to do things differently. You can't get different results doing things the same way. The reason you're on the treadmill and going around in the circle like the hamster in that little windmill, that little fella, he's in there. And he started going up there. You think he's going to make it? No. Did he get tired? He's still, he keep going. The Bible says, he went to, into the place where John first baptized. And what? And there he abode. And he stayed there. Wherever you're being blessed, stay right there. Don't move. Okay. I don't care how they're looking at you, how they roll their eyes at you, what they said about you. If you're being blessed, you stay right there. If your family be in heaven, I don't care what you have to go through. You stay right there and deal with it. Because you're in a good spot. When Jacob laid down, the Bible said he laid on a stone. He used a stone for a pillow. And he lay down and went to sleep. And he started dreaming and he saw a ladder. And the angel was ascending and descending. Right. And he said, oh, this is Bethlehem. Right. The house of God. <laughs> the Holy Ghost. And he named that place Bethlehem. Yeah. And when they all, Jacob got in trouble. He'd go back to that spot. Right. Later on, he went and laid down and took a nap at that spot. Right. And the Bible said, there he wrestled with God all night long. The Holy Ghost. Right. And the Bible said that God yeah. smote him in his the hollow of his hip. And he had to hold on to God. I said, a lot of us, but it is. We're telling God, help me, brother. We're telling God what we're going to do. You, you need to start leaning on God. And when he started holding on to God, the Bible said, the Lord was in the form of an angel. He says, he said, let me go out. The sun is rising out. I need to leave before the sun comes up. Jacob said, I'm not going to let you go. Until you bless me. See, you might have to learn how to grab hold to some stuff. It, it may be an uncomfortable place. You may be laying on some stones and some rocks. They may even be throwing rocks at you and hiding their head. But if you're being blessed, my son's on the camera. I'm ready to have fire two weeks ago. Kept working for two weeks. He got another job. Amen. At the same company with a different management. Y'all not here. The outside contractor that tried out the Cooper Tire in the warehouse tried it because he put in the application for the plant for Cooper Tire. But what they didn't know about saving, help the whole thing. They would have just let him retire like he was going to do and get them two weeks done. So his job is going to start coinciding with it's the same, but he had to give it a two week notice. It would have been the same difference. They could have been partaking in the blessing. They said he was one of the best workers they ever had. Come on. He wrote him a little nice email. I thank you for this job. Come on. It has paid for my children's private school. There's a lot of money. I was looking at private school. I had public school. Y'all not here. <laughs> and he told them all the benefits that he received. Sorry that it happened like it happened. And they, the dismissal was abrupt and all that. He just talked about it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I 
wish I had a witness. Greater works. We're going to do some greater things. It, it takes doing things more. Now watch this. We have to become more elaborate. We have to become more sophisticated. Uh, as the world begins to change and uh, intelligence is intelligence, don't get me wrong, but technology and ways and procedures of doing things to do things greater, and then you must uh, uh, tap into all the resources that's available to you. Amen. Who would have thought that Twitter Good, back. and Facebook, mm -hmm. the internet, mm -hmm. would be used for the kingdom of God? Amen. I'm trying to rush. Okay. Read what he says. What verse are we? 41 verse, read what he said. And many resorted unto him. Uh -huh. said, John did no miracles. Now, now, John, although he had the anointing of Elijah, and Elijah did many miracles, uh -huh. and Elijah's protege, who was Elisha, right. received a double portion of Elijah's anointing. Right. And when you go through the Bible, you can count twice the number of miracles that Elisha did that then alive Jug because he had a double portion. Yeah, right. But although John the Baptist had a lot of right. anointing, right. it wasn't in miracles. <laughs> John didn't do one miracle. <laughs> but I'll tell you this, the greatest miracle is salvation. Yeah. A changed life is the greatest miracle. Yeah. You show me a changed life and I'll prove to you it's a God. Yeah. I'm talking about a changed life. Oh, see, I don't know about you, I was changed. I, I've been born again, I don't know if you've been born again, yeah. but that's a miracle. Yeah. I had to a dump mentality. I was raised on the dump. And the dump had a had mentality about it. And the Lord fixed it. Where he changed, make it new. So the Bible said John did no miracles. But what? But all things that John spake of this man were true. But the thing that John talked, do you not know that John was known mostly, a lot of people, for, for baptizing? But John was a great teacher. Right. Mm -hmm. The disciples came to Jesus and said, Master, teach us right. to pray. Right. Like John yeah. taught his disciples right. to pray. Yeah. That's the secret. Yeah. I don't think we know how to pray. Yeah. See, I pray like, give me, give me. Yeah. Help me, help me. Yeah. But the disciples said, teach us to pray. John's disciples know how to pray. And if you want to have a greater works, you got to change your prayer life. If you can't, you can't have these Mickey Mouse prayers. And, and you, 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 you're going to have to become dynamic and fervent. The Bible talking about speaking with fervent, with, with passion. So the Bible says, no miracles. But everything the man said, it was true of Jesus. What is that? And many believed on him. Now everybody not going to believe, but many will. I want us to get ready. God is about to send many. I'm talking, he's going to send us many. I'll, I'll prophesy on what's been at night. He told me, he told me plainly. Many are going to believe. The word is out there. The gospel is being preached. See, it's just about the word. You don't have to be a Paul preaching. You don't have to be singing like an angel. When the anointing get on your voice, your voice can be cracking. It can be missed notes. And you out of time. You two step behind you. But if the anointing is on you, that anointing will remove burden off of people's life. See, what we want to listen to, we want to listen to the sound. But see, sound is not what anointing is. Anointing moves burdens out of your life. Anointing will move drugs out of your life. If you want to feel better, I can show you some stuff that will make you feel better. But you want to be better? 